Wow. Yeah. You know, we decided to set up Divine Solutions Japan, and you know that's basically what I'm doing now. Can you tell us um, how you got into Jiu Jitsu. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Taken by Japan, a podcast dedicated to giving a platform to foreigners living in Japan to tell their stories and to share their experiences. Knife, would you like to introduce our guest today? Oh, most certainly. So today we have a very special guest. Not only did he not start off as an ALT, but he is now the CEO of his own established company. Mm -hmm. And with that, I would like to introduce our guest, Mr. Razan Ashraf. Hello, how are you doing? Hey guys, thanks for having me. Oh, thank you for being here. It's an honor to have you on our podcast, and our podcast is pretty young. And to have such a amazing guy, high profile guest on our show, it's we're honored. Yeah, and uh, yeah, and with that, uh, uh, why, why don't you start off uh, start us off, Razin? Um, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself, uh, your company, and uh, what it is you do here in Japan? Sure. Um, so I've been in Japan since two thousand seven. Um, you know, I came here originally, um, you know, my, my parents, actually my dad was a diplomat and, um, you know, I always had a, I always had an urge to check Japan out. I was living in Australia. I just finished school. They got posted out here and, um, it just made perfect sense. Right. So my plan was come out here, learn Japanese for a year and apply to a bank. Um, I basically studied accounting and finance and that's kind of what, you know, the initial plan was. Right. But shortly after coming here. One of my mates uh, who was working in finance actually suggested me looking into recruitment, you know, because he felt that it suited my personality. I had no idea what it was, um, but, you know, I kind of took his advice and, you know, spoke to a few firms and um, I received an offer from, from Hayes, uh, which is, uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar, but they're one of the I biggest, read up a bit um, about it, yes. Yeah, it's, it's a British recruitment company and, um, you know, I, I, I like the people, I got a good vibe and decided to take that offer. and. Um, that's all she wrote, right? So I kind of forgot about the whole finance thing. Mm -hmm. um, and I quickly discovered the profession that um, I, I enjoyed. And I quickly realized that it was financially rewarding as well. So that's basically my story in a nutshell. And this was back in 07. So I worked for Hayes for about eight and a half years. And then I, you know, I, I met my wife there. And um, mm -hmm. you know, eight and a half years later, we decided to like set up Divine Solutions Japan. And you know, that's basically what I'm doing now. You know, we uh, specialize in financial services. So, um, you know, my company, we mainly cover investment banks, hedge funds, um, asset managers, um, private equity funds, um, corporate banks, you know, whenever they're looking for skilled uh, laborers, mm -hmm. you know, they usually like, it's a relationship based business. And, uh, you know, I, the clients that I work with, you know, I've been working with them for a long time. So they usually come out to me and they're looking for someone and basically where I come in and try to introduce the best talent to them. Oh, wow. Oh, Thank you. That's Thank amazing. You. Thank you very much. And um, mind if I ask, uh, so what were some of the challenges that you faced when you were starting up Divine Solutions in Japan? What were some of the, uh, what were some of the, the challenges, the obstacles that you faced, especially, you know, being in Japan and everything? And being a foreigner in Japan as yes. well. So I, I can uh, assume that a Japanese person who uh, studied finance could start a business a little easier than foreigners. And I'm sure there are a lot of walls that the Japanese government puts up for foreigners. So yeah, sure. yeah, that's a wonderful question. Yeah, yes. how did you face those challenges? I mean, I'd love to take all the credit for it, but you know, full transparency. Like I have a very, you know, um, a reliable and a resourceful, you know, boss, my wife. And uh, <laughs> Good boss. You know, yes. so, so my advice to like gaijin, you know, wanting to like, you know, settle down and do well here, find a good Japanese girl. I'm just kidding, right? But, uh, that <laughs> that's that's kind of true. <laughs> that, help, that definitely helps a lot, right? Um, you know, so yeah, like, uh, obviously, you know, um, it was, it was um, a, a very, like, combined effort together, right? Like, mm -hmm. you know, as you know, life, you know, um, mm -hmm. my dad was a diplomat, so, you yes. know, he's basically a government worker for 30 something years. So, you know, he's good at people, but he's not really a business person, right? Which is mm -hmm. kind of what I inherited, right? So I think I'm good with people, but I'm not really, you know, someone who starts new businesses, right? But my wife, actually, her family, they're all entrepreneurs and, uh, you know, so it was a very good combination and uh, that's how we basically set up, right? But the reality is, right, there's a lot of other foreigners that can set it up on their own. It's, mm -hmm. it's not that difficult um you know at least it wasn't like you know 10 years ago um but yeah like i don't think it's really that difficult right it's just having a certain amount of capital and like you know having some office space 
And um, I think there's some administrative process that you get through, right? But I think the most important thing is like, if you're going to venture to something like that, you need to have contacts with clients, right? right. Without yes. that, it's a big, big risk, right? Um, so, yeah. How did you start those um, connections? So, I mean, obviously, like, you know, when I started up, at Hayes, I was covering financial services, right? So I, I, I built my name up there, right? And, uh, you know, I, I basically was able to kind of earn my stripes as a, you know, as a, as a consultant who knew what they were talking about, right? Mm-hmm. So once I left, uh, obviously, I have a non-compete period where, you know, I won't pay clients from, mm-hmm. from you know, um, my previous company. But the reality is in this business, right? Like, it's not really, it's more about who your relationship is with, right? So after my, my um, you know, uh, non-compete period was, was over, you know, I reached out to them and then basically I was back working with, you know, similar clients and then, you know, it, it's a small world, right? So people, you know, once you start doing well at something, right, like it, it, it kind of spreads, right? So mm-hmm. I was getting a lot of like, you know, business inquiries coming directly to us and uh, not just in Japan, but, you know, firms looking to set up in Japan. So they just look at a website and, you know, get in touch with us, right? So yeah, that's basically, you know, how, how it, it, you know, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, just. That's- uh, you have to have a motivation. You have to have a dream. You have to come to Japan, make connections, mm-hmm. um, know what you want, and um, of course, being an ALT is the easiest way to get to Japan. Yes, that's but the one way to do it. Do you think it's possible for someone to come to Japan as an ALT with a teaching degree and somehow develop their skills and move on to the recruitment agency or moving on to making their own business? Do you think that's possible? I absolutely think it's possible, right? <laughs> It, um, you know, I mean, it, it's basically, you don't need a degree to be a recurring, you know, expert, right? It's yeah. the people skill. It's about, you know, understanding what industry you're covering. Uh, most importantly, it's, you know, being able to like build a rapport with people, right? Because, mm-hmm. you know, it's very, it, it's basically a sales job. Okay. Right? Um, so, you know, it really depends on like your drive, you know, um, I mean, what I've seen in my, you know, 17 years experience in the recruitment is that, People who are usually from a sports background oh. tend to do well because you're very competitive. You know, you want to like, um, you know, you want to push yourself and like, you know, uh, I mean, similar to in jujitsu, right? Like, yes. you compete with yourself, right? So, yes. you know, there's a saying in recruitment: you're only as good as your last month, right? So, it's always it's very very revenue focused. Um, but you know, it, it's it's definitely something that you know. Um, I mean, I won't say that oh, only sports. It's only for like you know people who are from sports or like athletes you know, ex-athletes or whatever right but they tend to have an edge because of that competitive nature right um, i think there's over ten thousand recruiting companies in tokyo so wow. to set yourself wow. apart you got to bring something different right um so yeah um so Jap- japanese culture the company client relationship is not only mm. done in the office but after hours as well with yes. nomikais going out to drink and how do you balance having those um customer client relationships and having to go out with them on also having doing jujitsu like you said and having yeah. a family um that's one of the questions i was so, really interested in asking how do you balance all this stuff it's it's very yeah um it's like i think i've kind of gotten better at the art of like you know <laughs> fixing my you know my priorities so basically like you know i'm turning 45 this year right so doing the whole the drinks and like fun entertainment unless i really have to like i usually push it to lunch um, uh-huh. i still do sometimes take clients out for drinks and whatnot right but you know we don't really have to go as extreme as some other you know going to like host bars or something we don't yeah. need to do that far right like you right. know sometimes the restaurants do drinks whatever but i usually try to keep to lunch and as far as BJJ goes, you know, I usually like to start my day. You know, I, I wake up at like 5.30. Wow. Um, I go to class. I do the 7 a.m. class. You know, I, 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 go, uh, 7 I take 7 a.m. jiu-jitsu class, yes. Yeah, so I wake up at 5.30. Um, my daughter has to take the train to go to school at 6.50. Wow. So I drop her at Jigaka Station, head back home, take my bike, go to the dojo, do an hour, get back, and then I come to work. Wow, oh, that's, wow. that's awesome. So, right? Actually, so uh, you know, I mean, yeah, like I think, you know, I think we were talking about this the other day. Like, if I were to roll in the evenings, mm-hmm. I don't sleep at night because my adrenaline afterwards is still like kicking in. So when I get it done first thing in the morning, like my whole day, I'm like pumped and I'm energetic and you know I have a clear head. And you know, like I think um, trying to take out someone's limbs or choking someone senseless is a really great way of releasing stress. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so once you kind of get that out of the way, like 
everything else is kind of chill, you know? That's a good point. Actually, um, going to uh, jujitsu now, um, we, we were going to bring yeah. it there eventually. Yeah, let's, um, I'll open it up for you guys to just jujitsu um, it up. And just for our viewers who, who don't really understand a lot about jujitsu, so, Rosin, why don't you tell us um, how you got into uh, jujitsu and how does it help you remain uh, sort of like folk? Has it helped you like maintain a level of discipline or focus? How has it helped you in your daily life, in your business? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I kind of, like, I, I first heard about, like, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu back in the late 90s, and I just didn't know what it was. I mean, growing up, I was always, you know, keen on action movies and martial mm -hmm. arts, and, you know, I was kind of sold on, like, Kung Fu and all that, the mm -hmm. Chinese traditional martial arts, right? Um, until I started getting more into MMA. Um, uh -huh. So I'd always be watching it, but, you know, I never really grappled or anything like that. And, you know, I started doing Muay Thai. I did that for a bit less than two wow. years. Wow. Um, and then one of my, um, actually one of my ex-clients, well, a really good friend of mine, he was like, hey, like, have you ever, you know, done Jesus before? Um, and I was like, no, but I've always been kind of intrigued by it. So I just went for one session and, you know, I really, really kind of fell in love with like just the whole, you know, there's just so much like mental strategy in it, right? Um, and I felt like, you know, as I was getting kind of older, you know, like probably it's, Striking is, you know, a bit more like kind of. Um, I think, you know, it's it's, you know, you, it shows a lot more. You know, if you're having a professional job, right? Like yes. walking up to a client meeting, you know, spreading to a domestic bag with a black eye. I mean, <laughs> in the DJJ sometimes, right? Like it's not really a, a good look, right? So, yes. Um, I, I kind of, you know, and I also felt personally like for, for myself, like you know, grappling was just something that you know I, I felt more comfortable and just enjoyed it more. I don't know why, but yeah, that, that was basically. But definitely, you know, as I was saying, like dealing with stress and like, you know, discipline and banter, you know, just keeping yourself healthy, right? Like, you know, I mean, after like a session, you know, you're like, you know, you work muscles that you didn't know existed, right? Like, yes. I mean, you know, I've been doing weights for like years, but you can't compare it, right? Like it's something completely different. And um, Knife told me that you're in one of the best um, dojos in Tokyo. Yeah, I mean, you know, Capri I don't know, Dan. I think like, uh, you know, best is, you know, it's it's kind of you know, perception based, right? But um, oh, yeah. it's definitely one of the biggest ones. Um, my, the dojo that I go to, Jiuguoka, it's like a fat leaf, you know, um, the head instructor is, you know, a really close friend of mine. Um, you know, I was one of the first members there and, uh, you know, I mean, Carpe Diem, they're, you know, they're, they're very big in Japan, obviously, right? Like, um, mm. I used to be at the Hero Branch of the Park. Um, but as soon as they open up Jugoka, right, um, you know, so yeah, we have great instructors, you know, English, Japanese, very good community, um, you know, mix of different ages, kids' classes, you know, different nationalities, different professions. So, you know, you got a real chance to, like, mingle with good people, right? Right, um, right. So, yeah. And that, um, that's actually good advice for anybody who wants to come to Japan as an ALT or as an entrepreneur. Don't just come to Japan, go to work, go home and do whatever. Join a community, whether yes, it's uh, martial definitely. arts or I was part in uh, Aichi. I was part of a basketball community. I joined a team and I made friends there and I met their families and we got really close. So yeah. uh, not only coming to Japan is important but and working, but also coming and um, joining a community of people yeah. and making Absolutely. friends with Japanese people, foreign people. Mm -hmm. It's That's what's awesome about oh, yeah. Japan. And Most everyone's definitely. so closely, li li like lives so close together. Um, in my experience in America, like living in Michigan, there's not really that many tight communities. There's a lot no, of people no. and it's like a lot of like big space. Jiu-Jitsu but... jiu is very tight. Yeah. It's a very tight community. So if you come to Japan and you're interested in Jiu-Jitsu or any kind of martial arts or even sports, yeah, there's tons of communities that people can join just like, uh, just like Razin and um, you can make friends and lifelong friends too. Oh, definitely. Oh, and Razin, if you don't mind just for, I hope you don't mind for our viewers, but could you show sure. them your jujitsu, your posters to show how passionate <laughs> you are about, about your, about jujitsu. And, um, and yes, I do have some jujitsu people following me as well on this channel. Sure. Okay. Um, all right. Let me just show you my screen. Sorry. We got, we got big Leandro Lowe. Oh, wow. Jeez. Wow. And, and you got That's races. my son when he won some competition. Unfortunately, he doesn't train anymore, but he was real. He was a natural. Wow. 
Hickson Gracie. Hickson, the legendary That's Hickson Gracie. Royalty right there. Mm -hmm. That's and awesome. You're going to have a Michael Jordan there too, right? Oh, yeah, of course. And for you, Ethan. Uh, yes. Michael Jordan. Nice. Final is a clutch shot, man. Everybody knows yeah. that shot. <laughs> right? That poster is just like, yeah, it, it always up. Gives me good motivation to stop my day when I look at that. Yeah. Everyone's black and white except Jordan. <laughs> now you just need that kind of poster, the the one poster of the mar the martial artist, mm -hmm. but you need a poster of knife. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, some uh, of your poses. Oh, and ju just to give a bit of background, so, um, Razen, you've also uh, not not only are you a jujitsu practitioner, you're still a, you were a competitor for a while as well. So you you balanced business and also competing in jujitsu yeah. as well, which is amazing. Yeah, I was competing quite a lot, um, you know, until Purple Belt, you know, I had mm -hmm. a couple of injuries, but Likewise. yeah, I mean, I was, you know, yeah, at, at one point I was, I was competing fairly regularly. I think mm -hmm. my kind of highlight was, you know, winning all Japan, uh, Masters all Japan at Blue Belt, uh, the open awesome. weight and, you know, coming in bronze at my, my weight class, but, you know, some injuries, so I haven't really competed in a while, but like, it hasn't stopped me from training and, you know, I mean, whether you're in Jiu-Jitsu, for competitive reasons or a hobbyist or just fitness you know i think there's always a good reason to try it out mm, true uh, and knife your your dojo in shizoka is it's, it's really quite, nice right oh yeah it's quite well known as well uh bonsai jiu-jitsu it's yeah. uh, it's where i train uh also wonderful community friendly community yeah. as well a lot of well-established uh, black belts in bonsai jiu-jitsu although uh Razin, i've turned more into a hobbyist <laughs> now I'm 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 yeah. not what they call a hobbyist purple belt. Right. Same here. Same here. Yeah. You know, I mean, <laughs> you know, we're getting older and you know, true, it's all about longevity, right? So True, true. Yeah, it's it's all about not getting injured and you know, enjoying and learning, right? Yep. Uh, and and just going just sorry, just jumping back to uh, the uh the uh the business side of things a little bit. So, um is there any uh, I'm sorry if you already asked this already. No. Is is uh, is there any advice you would have for maybe young young people, entrepreneurs, or ALTs who come to Japan and maybe want to start something, mm. uh, especially yeah, if they're foreigners? I, I think, you know, um, you know, what my advice would be, right, is first of all, you know, try to understand, like, you know, what your, what your motivations are, right? Like, if mm -hmm. you're, you know, some people feel, you know, a spark about teaching, right? Like, they, they, they feel, you know, rewarded by watching someone develop and grow and learning English, right? Mm -hmm. Others are more motivated by remuneration, right? Um, others want kind of a mix of both, right? Like, you know, teaching and also getting paid or whatever it is, right? So I think, first of all, you just have to like understand like what drives you, um, mm -hmm. you know, and then from there, like, you know, I mean, obviously, like, you know, the, the, the teaching group is, you know, maybe one of the easiest ways to get in Japan, right? But mm -hmm. I've, I've seen a lot of like, you know, ex-teachers who become very good in recruitment and other, you know, wow. not just in recruitment, but even in financial services or, you know, I mean, it's, it's not really so much about like where you start, but what efforts you put in to get to where you want to go, right? I, I think that's, you know, yeah. And there's a... There's oh. online sources. I was just looking up uh, on gaijinpot.com for some, mm -hmm. just, I don't know, some kicks and giggles, I guess, because I haven't sure. been on there in such a long time. But um, there aren't only ALTs on these websites like gaijinpot.com or jobsinjapan.com. There's also recruitment agencies right. looking for people. And yeah. they have the salary on there, and it's usually yeah. um, like maybe like 300,000 yen to like, I don't know, anywhere up to like 100,000 yen or 1 million yen or something, if I've got the, yeah. the yen uh, part right. But you can make right. up, a, you can make a lot of money, and a lot of it is um, motivation based and like. Um, sales and meeting quotas and if you're motivated if you yeah. don't want to be an alt anymore and you're motivated you can join these recruitment agencies yeah. and make a career out of that and if you develop just like you did if you could start there and then if you want to branch off and make your own company after that then that's a, um, that's a possibility as well i mean you know honestly right like it's one of those professions where you know as a first year you could literally make more than doctors, lawyers, and you're not seated on your desk the whole time. You know, you meet someone new every day. You know, it's, it's I mean, for someone like myself, you know, like, I, I find it's the best. You know, I think finding a profession that not only, you know, um, it's financially rewarding, but also you enjoy, right? Like, waking up every morning, you're like, I'm going to go nail this today. I'm going to go do this, right? Like, that's like, you know, I think it's it's rare to find a profession where, 
you know, people are always happy, right? Because, you know, I'm talking to, like, very, very, you know, um, successful bankers, right? And, you know, like, I cover different areas, right? Like, so you can have a PhD in math, right? He's a quant analyst, and they're, like, rocket scientists, literally. But day-to-day, with small, like, social skills, they lack, right? And mm-hmm. then I'll talk to someone else who's a trader, and they're good enough, but they're more like, you know, very quick, very like, you know, on, on, on the dot, right? So you see different personalities. I mean, they're all like super smart, right? Mm-hmm. You get to meet very, very different personalities um, and you learn how to like deal with them, right? So if you talk to like a salesperson, there's a different personality. If you talk to a compliance person, there's a different mm-hmm. personality, right? So, um, yeah, I mean, you know, and going back to like, you know, what you mentioned about, um, you know, coming here and having the drive, right? Like it's one of those jobs where there's no real cap, right? It really depends on, you know, how much you want to make, right? I mean, of course, you got to check because every firm has their own pay structure. Mm-hmm. But uh, for DSJ, you know, my <laughs> consultants, there, there's no pay cap, right? Wow. Like, you know, I've, seen, I've seen people doing from 8 million a year to 40 million a year, right? Like, it's, oh, you know, it's, there's, 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 no, there's no cap. Yeah, and um, that's crazy. Wow. I, I had a bad experience at a Japanese um, business environment. So I graduated from university with a Japanese uh, language and literature de- degree. And I just I was going to go to Japan and be an ALT, but I decided to stay for a little while. I had this girlfriend and I just decided to stay for her. And I got this job at a business and doing like a, a lot of um, purchase orders and a lot of grunt work mm-hmm. and the environment I had there was toxic and it made me sick to my stomach so whenever i saw these even on gaijinpot.com or something online these recruitment agencies i instantly got sick to my stomach and i'm seriously afraid of them but after speaking with you right now and your i don't know your motivation and your explanation of the environment at your company it actually (laughs) it's like Oh, that would be really nice. Refreshing. No, it's yeah, really refreshing. Yeah, refreshing. I mean, obviously, there's there's a lot of choices, right? Like, you know, mm-hmm. there's a lot of international ones. There's Japanese ones that have an international arm. So, like, you know, people like us um, need to go to an international group. Right. Yes. Um, you know, like, it, you would struggle at a at a very Japanese place. Right? Yeah, because of course. the style and, you know, the pay structure, everything is very different. So, mm. Yeah, it's just like Japanese bank versus... The U.S. is not like, right? It's very, very different cultures. Yeah, and in my experiences right now, we know someone here in Shizuoka who's making a killing on the uh, architecture, in oh, the yeah, architecture yeah. world, Architect- yeah, like yeah. designs for houses and buildings and everything. And he has kind of your attitude, like just go for it. He just he's. He's, I don't, want, I don't want to say crazy, a good kind but of he's crazy. a good crazy. I met him. He's just like, we're doing this. We're doing that. We're making bucks. We're making stacks on stacks on stacks. And uh, having that kind of motivation is, I think, Japanese people love it because it's a, right. it's a I, step away from the normal everyday kind of monotony mm. of rules and regulations. Mm-hmm. And they're like, we're coming here and we're running this town. Right. 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 Yeah. I mean, you know, you got to be, you got to be willing to take risks right like mm. without taking risks to a certain extent there's never going to be a reward right yeah. so i mean obviously for us when we first set up the risk was you know we had two kids i'm gonna quit oh. my job where i was pretty comfortable i was managing three ah. teams you know like i was set right i mean obviously um you know like i'm doing a lot better now right like financially but mm. i wasn't you know in a position where i had to like leave my job because of money right like mm. you know it, it was it was comfortable but I felt like, you know, trying to move to the next step. Um, and, you know, the main motivation behind that was where the company I was working for, it was very, um, you know, like, it's all good, you know, uh, memories for me and I learned everything there, but it was a very UK Aussie style uh. um, that was kind of, you know, being asked almost forcibly to be implemented in Japan, right? And, you know, I tried to also push back and when I realized that that's not gonna work, I decided to like, you know, okay, it's time for me to follow me. Because awesome. Japan is obviously, as you guys know from living here, right? Yes. It's a very, very unique, different way. Mm. And, you know, like my wife's Japanese, my kids, you know, the Japanese. So I've decided to make this home. And, you know, um, for me to do well here, you have to be on board with how Japan does stuff, not right. how Australia or London does it, right? Like, true, it's different. True. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. So if you want to come to Japan, and if you want to be an ALT, you're, that's possible. If you want to come here for a little bit and then leave, that's a possibility. If you come here and love it, which 99 per, I think 99% of people do, there are avenues for people to, for you to find and for you to take. There's opportunities. We had a podcast episode, I think two episodes back, uh, where we talked. 
with yeah, uh, we oh, talked yeah, yeah, two Hugh. episodes ago. Yeah, I talked about different a- avenues. One of our friends, uh, Hugh, he stopped being an ALT and now he's working as a translator at the city office. So there's different options, and as long as you are motivated, are willing to com- not conform so much, but to live in Japan and co- like uh, coexist with the Japanese way of life, then. You'll be successful, and you are a success story. You are and it's, definitely a success it's, story. It's Rosa. awesome having you on. Anyway, um, thank. Honored, honored to be here, guys. Thank you. Yeah, for thank, time. yeah thank you so much. Anyway, thank you so much for coming, Razin. Um, it's been a pleasure having you. Uh, hopefully, we can uh, meet in Tokyo and get some roles in as well. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, let's Thanks do that. Thanks for having you guys. No you know, problem. Really appreciate it, and uh, Divine Solutions Japan. That's the name of the company. Uh, Thanks so much, guys. We're going to put a link in the, uh, yeah. in, in the description so that an, anyone who's interested can click, can, uh, can click on the link. And if you have a recruitment website where people can apply for positions or anything, we'll put that in there as well. If you so would like, yep. Whatever, okay. whatever, you're, uh, whatever you want to, us to share, please let please. us know. Yes, I mean, for, the, for, for my uh, company website, there's, a, you know, there's jobs posted there as well as for each other. So, yeah, it, it's all there. All right, awesome. All right, thank you. All right, thank All you, right. everyone, for joining Thanks. us today. You, if you like this podcast, please like, share, and subscribe. Uh, subscribe. Most importantly, subscribe. Um, with your support, we'll be able to have more foreigners on our podcast. So thank you for su- your support, and we'll see you next time. See you next time. Thank you, Rosie. Thank, thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Take care.